Fish on, my God. Oh, God, we got a monster. Sometimes you can mess around with stuff with a little fire and make a big fire. Or you can just make a big fire. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Benita, that's Yosh, and this is A Sailor in the Making, Tallulah May. For six years now, we've been sailing around the world on our 40-foot sailboat, Nanji. Subscribe to the channel and join us as we sail through remote Indonesia. Oh man, it is so good to be underway again. I was actually, I was fully dreading heading into Padang when we when we first departed from the Mentawais to head in there. We had to do it, it was an emergency. We had to go in. Benita really needed to see a dentist. We couldn't stretch that out any further. She was in a great deal of pain. But, um, and then going in there and I was just worried about all this weather that was coming. And then it turns out the weather wasn't actually that bad while we were in there. It would have been pretty shocking out of the islands, but it wasn't that bad in a Padang and so usually I dread going to the city but it was good we got the boat fully stocked we haven't been this stocked since we left Malaysia to first come over to Indo probably we are probably more stocked than what we were then like we've just got everything the boat's full of fuel heaps of food it's just a really nice feeling you know you have that feeling that we can just keep going for <laughs> forever <laughs> the motor on again now when we left it was uh, it was she was blowing up good 15 to 20 it's beautiful coming out of that south southwest even we're heading west northwest so it was a little bit forward of the of the beam but you know full sail Nancy loves it we're heeled over boosting through those ships uh, but the wind's just been steadily dying out and it's way more south now Nancy's butt's a little bit fairy as well, to be honest, but I'm just trying to delay the first clean because when you start cleaning, you can't go back. You just have to keep on cleaning. Look at this sunset over my shoulder. It's just so nice being at sea when it's all nice weather. That was a very cruisy night in the end. Beautiful sunset. Wind dropped right out and just got super glassy. It was that glassy, all the fishing, all the chummy boats, all the squid boats that you can see around on the horizon were well, even like a, a stairway to the boat, I guess, like the reflection in the water. That's how glassy the water was. So yeah, it was a very cruisy, calm night. We still got 25 miles off to the anchorage if we decide to stop. Um, I've just woken up, so I kind of feel like I want to stop, whereas Benita has just gone to bed and she feels like she wants to keep going. <laughs> so we'll just keep going. We still that's another four hours away, so we'll keep going and then decide when she wakes up in a couple of hours' time what we want to do. I guess many of you are probably asking the question now, saying, oh yeah, why don't you just keep going, mate? You've still got 150 miles to get to your destination. You've only been going for not even 24 hours, it's only been one night. What's wrong with you, mate? Well, the difference to our passage making now is this. And it's not necessarily about the weather or keeping the boat moving, all of those things can be done. It's more about keeping that one entertained. And we do get a lot more tired now on our overnight passages because we don't get our daytime naps. Because you 
got to keep this one entertained. See, we have our three hours, three on, three off through the night. So we, we try to get six hours sleep basically through the night. And that's about as good as you're going to get, mate. Fish on, hey! Oh man, she's having a nap and she started screaming. <laughs> I think it's a selfish, hey? Got a sailfish. What do you reckon? Yeah. So, is it off? I think so. Yeah. Oh my god. It's a sailfish, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, look how big it is. Oh, my God. We got a monster. Oh, poor thing. Oh, I hate this. Just trying to get it off. Oh, far out. What are we going to do? Oh. Do you want to just cut it? Like, seriously, don't just let it live. Like, can we just cut it? Um, yeah, I think maybe we have to. Yeah. It's really hard to handle because it is such a big, powerful fish and they fight till the death as well, which is the other thing. So. Generally, if you are game fishing, probably 50% of the time when you do catch a, fail, a sailfish, because they'll just bite until the death and they'll just get so exhausted and then they'll die. So then uh, we try our best to, to motor up on it and not fight the fish, and even then giving it time to, to jump off the lure, because we don't actually want to keep it, you know? Uh, but yeah, we got it, it was up next to the boat, and we just, just too hard to deal with, with baby Nancy being a high-sided vessel, having the tender on the back. They should take about a week, I suppose, to rust out of his mouth. He doesn't have a big long bit of line tangling behind him, so he's not going to get tangled, and he's still had plenty of energy left. So he swam off happily, but it's just a matter of how he's going to feed for the next week until that hook does rust out. But, you know, if we try to drag it up on deck, it's going to be so much stress for such a big fish. And then for us to get it up on deck, we're going to have to, like, lasso the tail or, or even gaff it, you know? It's the only way to get up on board. And, and honestly, I just don't want to kill a fit. I don't want to kill that sailfish. Like they're just beautiful fish, and I'd rather see him survive and swim for another day. So. They're amazing to catch, amazing to see, but just when you're trying to catch a mackie and you get a sailie, yeah. I think that's three, four times now we've caught a sailfish on a Hauko redhead lure. Normally people, if you're cast fishing the catch tail fish, you use like live bait. They rarely take a skirt when you're trawling, but it turns out they love a redhead. It's ridiculous. like housework and stuff with you we do this every single day but somehow it just miraculously ends up being dirty every single day <laughs> I think that's just what happens um, when you live in a small space with three people you're just gonna be really hungry when he gets home from surfing so I put on some potatoes with potatoes I like to um, cook them twice so I boil them first and then I roast them in the oven and it's so amazing. So that's going to be a nice big feed when he gets home and a nice snack that we can have during the day. All the veggies are ready to go in the oven. We've got lemon, pepper, salt on top of it. Oh, so good. Ah. 
The roast veggies are ready just in time because look who's here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How oh, was it? It was really good. It was really good after recovering from uh, hurting myself a week ago. I feel really good. It was yeah. super fun. We're at this cute little town and uh, we decided to go in and try and get our gas bottle refilled. And the guy in town that fills the gas bottles, ah! he's run out of gas as well. So. We asked a local fella if he could help us out. He helps out Yodis here and he said he'll be able to um, take our he'll be able to take our gas bottle down to the next town which is about an hour's scooter ride away and then fill it up there and bring it back to us. Um, he said that yesterday and we didn't hear from him um, today and so we ended up calling him this afternoon and just asking how it was going and it turns out that it's Indonesia's Independence Day today so nothing is open and we can't get gas so we realized how are we going to cook dinner <laughs> tonight? We've come up with a plan. We're going to have fish skewers on a beach bonfire and that's what we're just preparing now. We're in this big gorgeous bay and um, I think we're just going to try to find somewhere that there's wood to have this fire. It's not so much about the, uh, the view for us at this point in time because we're just trying to survive, you know? <laughs> Get his sticks washed up. Yeah, it looks like there's a few sticks washed up around here. This will have to do, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, Come here, Come here, Baba. Are you both okay? Alright, Dad's just got a cavity in his foot. Doesn't want to get it wet. Yeah. Come on, Baba. Uh, how's the. Uh, Assembly going. You found some wood? Yeah, it's really light stuff though. It's been here a long time. Okay. We'll be right. Pretty dry though. Yeah, huh? everything's super dry. We were going to have skewers, but it turns out that we don't have skewers as well. So we've just got marinade. <laughs> the marinade is made of soy sauce, sweet chili sauce, um, garlic, ginger, tom tomato sauce as well. Oh, good job, Baba. Are you helping dad? I can. <laughs> what kind of fire are we having here, Yosh? <laughs> You've got petrol. Sometimes you can mess around with stuff with a little fire and make a big fire. Or you can just make a big fire. Oh my god. Big fire. Alright, back Stand it back, up. Ladies. Kieran's watching this. Yosh's little brother. Loves a fire. <laughs> That's the worst lighter, by the way. Oh my god, Yash! <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, Daddy's silly, isn't he? Daddy did a big fire. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> Tallulah, don't try this at home. <laughs> Only when Dad's here. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. big one. Yeah, Daddy big, made a big fire. Is it hot? Uh. Hot. Uh, yeah, good girl. Hot. I, <laughs> yeah, he's hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Starting to get some, yeah. So I think we're going to have to move the rice onto some hotter coals because the ones it was under are out. Oh. Alright, well I think that was a success. We made it back to the boat alive with food and it's still hot so epic. Um, we're going to tuck in for some dinner. Is that enough? Uh, yeah, luggy. More? Yes, please. Really want some rice? I think she might want some more rice. Yeah, Baba. This is so good. Still got that skill of magic about that. 
pineapple and onion, eh? Mm. And I think the hardest part about cooking on the fire is not getting sand in there. Mm. And I haven't found a grain of sand, so. That's good. You did well. Hi, bud. Could be a little bit of coal axe in there. Mm. At one stage, I had a coal in there. No, it didn't. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going to phrase you here.